I think it's fair to say that I am obsessed with AMD's latest APUs. Like, in fact, I'm obsessed with all the APUs that they've ever come out with. Cramming so much performance into such a small package is no easy feat, and I'm just so thankful that they are constantly upping the game for office PCs, which is amazing, because when you look at Intel and their DG1 and their integrated graphics dedicated solution, it's just not very good. So AMD is at the top of the game, and I've already covered the 5600G, did a dedicated review of that, and then compared it to the 5600X, and then today is going to be the 5700G's turn. We're gonna be going toe to toe the 5700G with the 5800X and seeing how much performance do you actually lose when you decide to put in a dedicated graphics card because that's the upgrade path that a lot of people do end up taking with APUs. You only have to spend a couple hundred dollars on the CPU up front, and then you have time to save up for your GPU later on, and you're not stuck with no GPU in your system in the meantime. It's a great upgrade path that a lot of people tend to take, which is why I think these videos are actually really valuable. In the video where I compared the 5600G to the 5600X, the best graphics card that I had at the time was an RTX 3060, and that's about where you're putting a Ryzen 5 with the GPU level that we tested there. However, with Ryzen 7, I think we had to up the game a little bit, and thankfully, I was fortunate enough to get selected a Newegg Shuffle so that I could pick up a 3080 Ti, which is the comparison that we're gonna be doing here. How does a 5700G, with all its caveats from being an APU, perform when compared to a 5800X and an RTX 3080 Ti added into the mix? And we're gonna be covering all of that after I tell you about today's video sponsor. My friends, whether you're buying what we're talking about in today's video or just doing any other online shopping and you're trying to save as much money as possible, that's where today's video sponsor, Honey, comes in. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. Honey is basically your online shopping best friend. It's remarkably simple. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupon. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons on that site. And if Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the prices drop. I've had this help me out so many times when I'm buying something on Newegg, whether it's an SSD or in a case, and there's a coupon code that I didn't know about, Honey pops up, saves the day, and I can save 10 bucks here, 50 bucks there. I've saved hundreds of dollars using Honey. And those of you from the UFD tech audience have used our Honey link have saved over $54,000 by using Honey. They support all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to clothing brands and even food delivery. It's simple, if you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and works with whatever browser you use. So you can go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech and get it for free in two clicks. Again, that's joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. Be part of that massive amount of savings that the UFD tech audience has already had. And lastly, one little thing before we get into the meat of the video. This is the last video that I'm going to be recording in Florida because we have to move for my son's rare genetic disorder. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, we did a video where I covered all of that right up there. So go ahead and check that out. But this is a bittersweet video. Also, I'm just really thankful that I am doing it on the topic that I love very much. So to talk about the 5700G versus the 5800X, let's lay the groundwork of what makes them the same, but also what makes them different. They're both eight cores and 16 threads. They both have the same base clock of 3.8 gigahertz, but the 5800X has a 100 megahertz higher boost clock at 4.7, as opposed to the 5700G's 4.6. And then they look the same. That's kind of it. Same cores, same threads, roughly same clocks, but then there's a lot under the hood that actually makes them different. They have different amounts of L3 cache. The 5700G only having 16 megabytes, whereas the 5800X has 32 megabytes. And something else that likely will come into play here is that the 5700G only has PCI Express 3.0 lanes, which means that the Sabrent 4.0 Rocket Plus that I have in here can only run at three gigabytes per second as opposed to five gigabytes per second. However, there also likely will be some bottlenecking that happens on the RTX 3080 Ti as well. There's a TDP difference. The 5800X has a TDP of 105 watts, whereas the 5700G has a TDP of 65 watts. And one of the bonuses of the 5700G is that when AMD does put this on sale on August 5th for $359, it will include a Wraith Stealth Cooler as opposed to the 5800X, which just gives you fancy cutout cardboard. So getting a cooler for less money is actually quite nice. The last big difference between the two is that this has a graphics card inside while the 5800X does not. So you actually need something in your system in order to get it to run. So let's go ahead and see how bad the bottleneck would be between the APU 
versus AMD's dedicated chip. So I tested this in two different ways. One with lowest settings possible at 720p to see what the maximum ultra distance between these two chips is, and then something at 1080p high so that you can see a more realistic scenario, especially if you're trying to do some high refresh rate gaming. I don't have a 1440p monitor to test that right now because I packed everything else for, for a big move. So this is what I could do with the time that I had. And in case you wanna see more testing, let me know down in the comments and I'm more than willing to uh, throw these back on the test bench once I finally get to Pennsylvania. For the test bench system, I have the MSI B550 Gaming Edge, again with that Sprint Rocket 4.0 drive, and then 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. So that the only bottleneck we should experience between the 3080 Ti and the 32 gigs of fast RAM is that CPU performance. What is it actually looking like? So st let's start off with 720p low. Again, I'm not recommending that you play at these settings, especially with the 3080 Ti. It's just for the thought experiments to see how wide the cavernous gap is between these two chips. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the 5800X was 19.37% faster. Red Dead Redemption 2, the 5800X was 14.8% faster. Actually, for the rest of these, just assume that the 5800X is faster so that I don't have to keep saying it. For Fortnite, we had a difference of 31.5%. Cyberpunk 2077 yielded 14.5%. Devil May Cry 5 was 47.85%. Crisis Remaster, 40.25%. Metro Exodus, 30.1%. The nicest one of all, Valorant, a 69% difference with the 5800X coming in at an average 433 FPS. It was absurd. Witcher 3 gave us a 51% gain. Death Stranding was 15%. However, with that big caveat, there was a 240 FPS cap. I'm pretty sure that that divide would be a lot larger if we weren't running up to that 240 FPS average limit that we had. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was 27%. GTA 5, one of the smallest of all at 2.6%. COD Warzone, 24% in favor of the 5800X. Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming in at 4.7%. Borderlands 3 at 28.2%. Control, only 1.6%, but that's again because of that 240 FPS cap. When we're running into low settings, we're actually running into the engine limiting how many FPS we can get rather than the CPU. And lastly, for Resident Evil Village, 26% favor for the 5800X. So that's worst case scenario. In Valorant, you're gonna see a 69% difference between the 5800X and the 5700G. Now, but now let's talk about something that's a bit more more realistic. And again, in case you want me to test this at higher resolutions when I get set back up in Pennsylvania, let me know down in the comments. I'm more than willing to test out 1440p and 4K. So these next sets of benchmarks are the exact same games, but at 1080p, highest graphical settings, no ray tracing. Horizon Zero Dawn was 12% in favor of the 5800X. Red Dead Redemption 2, for the second time, this happened in the 5600G video. It was faster on the APU than it was on the dedicated CPU. I don't understand it. Maybe something weird is going on with the Vulcan protocol where it's pulling from the GPU power on the APU. I don't have it 100% explained, but this happened twice and it went in favor of the 5700G by 2.9%. The rest of these, the 5800X wins. Fortnite, 16% gain. Cyberpunk 2077, only 2.3%. Devil May Cry 5, 41%. Crisis Remastered, 38%. Metro Exodus, 16%. Valorant, another big difference between the two at 62%. Again, hitting that 420 FPS mark right there. Witcher 3, 4% gain. Death Stranding, 19% gain. And again, with this one, we're running into that 240 FPS limit again. I think it would be a lot higher if we didn't have that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 19.6 FPS difference. GTA 5, 11.2%. COD Warzone, 15%. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 4.5%. Borderlands 3, 4.2%. Control, 2.6%. And Resident Evil Village, 28.68%. So to average out the difference between the two chips at 720p lowest, you're looking at an average of 26% gain on the 5800X versus the 5700G. For 1080p high, you're looking more at an average of 17% with a lot of them being within two to 4% of each other, which is actually roughly the same
same overall experience. And in all of the testing, I didn't really experience much difference in the 1% and 0.1% lows. That is how smooth the gameplay experience was. It ran mostly similar on both of the chips, but overall, it does look like there is a bit of a performance gap between these two chips, especially if you're trying to achieve high frame rate in games such as Valorant. That 400 plus FPS that you're getting on the 5800X is hard to sneeze at when you're only getting 260 on the 5700G. If you have a 360 hertz monitor, maybe you should have saved up for the 5800X instead of buying the monitor. How does that work? How much money do you have to buy this over that? Who knows? Regardless, I don't think this is a condemnation of the 5700G. Having a 25% performance gulf between the two chips honestly is nothing to sneeze at for something that you're only spending $360 on and you don't need to buy a GPU for. Again, this came in an HP pre-built office desktop system, so this is more likely going to be what people are experiencing. We did the full review of the 5700G, which you can check out right there, but I honestly think that if you did the upgrade path to something that's a little bit less than a 3080 Ti, more likely in the 3070 to 3070 Ti region, you're not going to experience such a wide of performance margin. The RTX 3060 is roughly going to be identical because you're going to be bottlenecking on that GPU before you ever bottleneck on the CPU. And this will only apply the higher in resolution that you go. If you want to do 1440p or 4K gaming, the 3080 Ti's performance difference between the these two CPUs is going to dwindle till at some point it's going to be completely negligible, except in games that need that high FPS cap, such as Valorant. So overall, I'm happy with the performance of the 5700G. It gets close enough to the 5800X that if I was just a person who was in high school or college saving up in order to buy a GPU 6, 8, 10 months down the line, or somebody who's in the current economy where you can't buy a GPU, and the best you might be able to do right now is an APU, the 5700G is just a winner in my book. It gets close enough to the 5800X. Yes, those percentages are large. Sometimes it's over 100 FPS difference, but it gives you time to ride out the loss of a GPU, especially with them being overpriced right now. And if you're just saving up for one later on, it's a sure enough buy. Let me know what you think of the difference between the 5700G and the 5800X down below in the comments. And the next time I will see you will be in a vlog where I'm tearing all this down. But the next time you'll see me talking about like benchmarks and stuff, we'll be in Pennsylvania. In case you wanna support us on this transition for my family, where we're just trying to get my son the best medical care that you we can, you can check out our merch at linked in the video description. It's meant a lot. You could also support us on Patreon or Floatplane. You guys have been invaluable to making sure that I can keep my family healthy and safe, and I couldn't be more grateful for the time that we've had here. And I'm gonna miss the memories that were made, especially considering Reese and Catelyn moved here and the, that chapter is like completely dead and gone now. And moving on to the next one. So in case you wanna see the 5600G versus the 5600X, you can check out this video right over here. See you in the next video. Cheers.